Metal Galaxy is the third studio album from Hawaii metal band Baby Metal and released as a double album in Japan on October 8th, 2019 with an international version that removed two songs released three days later on October 11th. This review will be for the Japanese version. Now I do have a personal connection with Baby Metal as I actually am quite a fan of them. Especially in high school where with certain songs like Doki Doki Morning I would try to mimic the choreography in the music videos but I didn't record any of that and I'm glad because I would probably never let that see the light of day. Now, we're going to get into the artwork. Now, with the artwork, remember this does not affect my overall enjoyment right now. This is just something just for fun. And we're going to actually get into it right here. It's the same band logo from the last two albums, uh, but with a galaxy background. However, the constellation on the bottom with that, has the, that is beaming the Baby Metal logo is a nice touch. It's the best of the three logo covers. It's very much a case of if it's broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm gonna give this a uh, six out of 10. However, before we get into the music, I just want to talk about the Sun and Moon versions covers. The Sun version, this both versions features one member facing to the left with the middle section of the face from the nose slightly above the eyebrows, being covered by what appears to be a shard of a glass reflection of the person facing forward towards the member slash viewer. And in the Sun version, there is a sun in the background of the cosmos radiating on her forehead and the eyes of the reflection are yellow. In the moon version, it's more mellow and more with the forehead being more one with the cosmos and the eyes are blue. Both versions with just those two changes are just completely different in tone. And while I prefer the sun version, both are honestly perfect. Both covers get a 10 out of 10 for me. Now, let's get into the music themselves. The first song is an opening intro track, uh, Future Metal, which has nice hard hitting synth pads and features some neat changes. And the first 40 seconds are solid, and then the next 15 seconds are odd and not in a good way. It just clashes in a very bad way. Uh, and it's just honestly very awkward sounding. However, it gets back into it after those 15 seconds with some MIDI strings and has some neat vocal harmony to close it out. Overall, this would have been a great intro had it not been for those 15 seconds. Now we get into the opener, Da Da Dance, which is techno fused and has 90s Japanese dance music as an influence. There's guitar fiddling in the intro. Great guitar. There's a great guitar solo as well. It's very chorus driven. Very poppy song and it's very fun too. It's a great time to listen to. Uh, strong change up in the second verse and it's the second verse does remind me a lot of the second verse of the 3D Empire by Darren Gray, which is kind of an odd thing for me to think of in terms of as terms of what I think it sounds like, just because I doubt anyone would put Darren Gray and Baby Metal in the same like vicinity ever. But anyways, the woos that are occurred through the song also add a great amount of energy to the song and there's a very strong breakdown that hits hard and there's with the guitar fiddling through it. Very strong song and it follows up with Elevator Girl. Now I did listen to the English version too and I will say I do personally prefer that just because of the neat uh, novelty of hearing the song in my native language. But both versions are really solid. So the song features a strong groove. I love the rumbling bass in the verse. Seuss sounds great here. There's great noodling between the chorus and second verse. And the chorus is extremely strong here. I love how the intro starts out with this elevator music, sort of jazz bass as the backbone of it, and the vocal and the guitar riff on top before going into the actual song itself. I, and like I said, uh, and also I should say the English version in the song is very solid. If you're wondering how the English sounds, I think it sounds pretty good. The backing vocals from MOA on the song are strong. And the meaning of the song is actually just like an elevator moving up and down. The song expresses the emotional ups and downs seniors just go through as they mature. So, yeah. And then we get into Shanti Shanti, indie, Indian sounding song. I really love the percussion in this song and Sue's vocals following after Mo and Start. 
uh, follow after Moa's and the start. I also love Sue's vocal flows in the second half. Uh, and Moa, at some point, makes a sound effect from this old gem of video. Don't know why I would bring up that clip that probably no one's going to get until it's review and will probably be confused, but I digress. It's a very fun song. Sue has this exotic sounding a sound to her voice and the way that Sue and Moa play off each other is great. It was another absolutely fun song. Then we get into Oh Imagine 9, which features uh, Sabaton, which features the Sabaton frontman, and it is a Scandinavian metal song, which this song does sound like a bar song, and there's a sick breakdown, and it's another fun track, and I feel like some people might find the outro to be a little funny, um, or they might find it to be odd. However, it is a, it is one way to end a song, and we're going to get into Brand New Day, which features a mellow guitar solo and the guitars do take a massive backseat to the synths however they are doing neat progressions in the background there's a nice finger snap and uh, snap rhythm and the verses are soothing and this is the start of the more slower section of the first disc but it's not as valid if i describe the song genre wise in like one single way it would probably be space prog uh, and honestly it's as weird as sounds uh, this song actually reminded me a bit of star set now we're going to get into up down left right bbab start or i don't think there's a start but i think it's the konami code but it does have autotune acapella intro the there's huge video game vibes throughout the song and it has these eight distance throughout and I love the riffs and I love the synth in this track and the first verse features this soft great ambience much more mellow but there is a energy here then the song to close off disc one is Night Night Burn and the first thing that I thought of when hearing the song was Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas the instrumentals the instruments are yet again uh, a little varied on their synths, but it's only at the start, then it is blooming, and when the instrumentals come in, it is glorious. It is a throwback to the very first Baby Metal album, and it fits in that sound. And this song was actually written around the time of Megasune, which came out, which was a song on the first album. And I love the acoustic guitar that comes in right before the pre-chorus. And now we start disc two. In the name of, it has an epic intro, and the growls here do sound a little odd. I wasn't sure if they're pitch shifted or not, but I do like them just because they sound very primal. Sort of like a tiger or a puma. Uh, and the guitar fills are very more tin-like and I guess you could say tribal-ish. We have the opening track of Disc 2, which is Distortion, which is a song that illustrates a human with a two-faced personality who exists in a dystopia. I absolutely love the feature from Alyssa from Arch Enemy here, and it makes the song so much stronger, and I just thought the original was pretty much a perfect song to begin with. So yeah, blaring kick drum and the chorus it just helps the song just be that much more epic, and the snare is on the loud side, and I just absolutely love this song. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on so I just don't spend about like three to four minutes of me talking about why I think this song is just so amazing. So. Actually, I could do that with a lot of songs on here, so I want to keep it fair to you and to everyone. We follow that up with Papa Ya, Papa, Papa Ya, which reminds me a bit of Wildfire by Crossfade, and there is a great rap feature from F Hero. Uh, there is great energy in the song, and the pre chorus just helps to pump everything up. Overall, just really awesome. Then we have BMC or BXMXC. Um, and through the song, I actually got some femme vibes. I've seen some people comment that the song made them think of Korean K pop group Blackpink, and I could kind of see that. Um, so, femme and Blackpink vibes. There's more 8 bit electronica, like with the other Japanese exclusive track, which was the Konami Code one. Uh, 8 bit electronica. There's an industrial metal feel, and those riffs are just. Tasty, man. 
Uh, there's uh, the autotune falsetto adds a great glitch effect to the song, and there's a great whiplash of a drop after the acapella bit. And I just love the like the genty like riffs in the chorus. Then we start Kaguro, which it has a fantastic guitar group. The instruments could be slightly louder in the mix, and the guitar does some noodle filling in the chorus, however, it is another jam. Then we enter the end of the album, um, the, the tail end of the album, which has been referred to as the Trilogy of Lights. Um, we're going to start out, which starts out with Star Starlight. And which is a, another strong track and it's very powerful too. It feels like a continuation from Metal Resistance. The bridge in the song is just so damn powerful. There's just like a lot of emotion just seeping through it. It's definitely baby metal at their most mature and earnest. And there's great vocal harmonies between Mo and Sue, and this is actually the final song with Yui Metal in it before she left. And I'm actually, and I do believe Distortion had her still on it too, even in the new version. However, all the other songs on this are just Sue and Mo. I should have mentioned that earlier, but whatever. Um, it is, and also a lot of fans have used this song as a uh, tribute to. The guitarist who passed away, unfortunately, uh, or as a tribute to Yui Metal. However, both cases, I do think that it will resonate an emotional connection, and I feel like it can resonate an emotional connection outside of that sort of context. The second song in this trilogy is Shine, and the acoustic guitar here is actually done by Moa. And the guitar she plays right here feels very much Spanish inspired, and this song is the album's ballad. The guitar sounds similar in the chorus, I can't think of what song it, I'm, that it reminds me a bit of. And the soft vocals and the stop, start of the song are great as well. And I feel like, as terms of lights, this song definitely represents sunlight, and the song, the, uh, the song itself uh, portrays life and depicts the ups and downs we all experience through life. Then we get into the album closer, Arcadia. And the transition into this song from the last song works very well. In fact, all, the trilogy, all three Trilogy of Life songs just transition to each other like amazingly. This song is a shred fest. And in terms of what I could compare it to, this song is basically Road of Resistance Part 2, and it just has this majestic intro. The most... Uh, this sounds like the most fitting conclusion to a trilogy. It, just, it sounds like a conclusion. Uh, everything coming full circle, and that's what makes this the perfect closer for this album. Now, now that I think about it, all three of these Trilogy of Lights albums do for like a continuation of Metal Resistance. And overall, getting to my thoughts, uh, this song, this album, Metal Resist, I mean, sorry, Metal Galaxy, keeps the strong metal musical structure and evolution and maturity that was from Metal Resistance with the fun and more J-pop sound of the self-title. The call and response vocal tag team is the strongest on this album, and honestly, it's probably the best big metal album when it comes to the view of the backing vocals. This is another strong offering for the band, in fact, this could be their best album, only time will tell, and would have given this album more spins, because Metal Resistance is my favorite album right now. Uh, Baby Metal does play outside of their box, and it's a very open box in this one. Uh, however, Baby Metal does not lose our identity here, minus some very minor things like the 15 seconds in the intro track. This album is perfect. And like I said, only time will tell if it's better than Metal Resistance, which is my favorite Baby Metal album. Now, 
overall, I'm going to be giving Metal Galaxy by Baby Metal a 9.5 out of 10, giving it a tier of Masterpiece. My favorite tracks were Da Da Dance, Elevator Girl, Shanti Shanti, Night Night Burn, Distortion, Papa Ya, BMC, Starlight, Shine, and Arcada. What did you think of Baby Metal Metal Galaxy? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I want to thank you for taking your time out of your day to watch my review. And I hope you all have a great day. See you.